In 1945, the noose was tightening around Nazi Germany. The 1,000-year Reich was being invaded by the Allies in the West and the Soviets in the East. With his fortunes rapidly declining, Hitler decided to launch an offensive against the Soviet forces. But this offensive would not be aimed at the Soviet armies invading Germany, but would instead be aimed at their armies in Hungary. This would be Operation Spring Awakening, the Third Reich's last offensive. By January 1945, it was clear to almost everyone that Germany had lost the war. The Battle of the Bulge had raged for weeks already and had exhausted German strength on the Western Front. Meanwhile, on the Eastern Front, the Soviets were finalizing their preparations to launch their Vistula Oder Offensive. It was only a matter of time before the war would end in Europe. On January 12th, the Soviets launched their offensive, which tore through the German lines in Poland. Four days after the start of the offensive, Hitler ordered the 6th Panzer Army to withdraw from the Western Front and be refitted before moving to the Eastern Front, in order to be the spearhead for a new offensive. Both the commander of the 6th Panzer Army, Josef Dietrich, and the chief of staff of the OKH, Heinz Guderian, wanted the 6th Panzer Army to be deployed behind the Oder River to protect Berlin. But Hitler overruled them. He insisted the army be used to protect and secure the last remaining oil fields under German control in Hungary. The 6th Panzer Army was to have been fully refitted by the 30th of January, but this proved impossible and it continued to receive reinforcements after arriving in Hungary. The Germans went to great lengths to hide the movement of an entire army from the Soviets by routing some divisions up to Berlin and then south to Hungary, and also changing the names of the units taking part in the attack. However, the Soviets detected the German troop movements and deduced that the Germans were preparing to attack. Even as the Germans were preparing for their offensive, the Soviets were planning their own offensive to take Vienna, which was to start on March 15th. Even if the Germans launched their own offensive before then, the Soviets would still launch their offensive as planned. The German offensive was to be launched north and south of Lake Balaton. The attack in the north between Lakes Balaton and Valencia was to be carried out by the 6th Panzer Army and the 3rd Panzer Corps of the 6th Army. The attack to the south of Lake Balaton was carried out by the 2nd Panzer Army and the 91st Corps. The German aims, or more specifically Hitler's aims, were to surround and destroy the Soviet armies between Lake Balaton and the Danube and Drava rivers, to secure the Hungarian oil fields, and to establish bridgeheads over the Danube for future offensive operations. The offensive was due to start on the 6th of March. Operation Spring Awakening would involve nearly 300,000 German soldiers. They were divided up into three armies under Army Group South and Army Group F. These were the 6th Panzer Army, 2nd Panzer Army, and 6th Army. Also taking part was the 91st Corps, from Army Group E. The 6th Panzer Army was to take the leading role in the operation with the other armies acting in a supporting role. The 6th Panzer Army and 3rd Panzer Corps had between them some 300 tanks and assault guns, which included the Tiger II heavy tank. Facing them was the 3rd Ukrainian Front with the 26th, 27th and 57th Armies, the 4th and 9th Guards Armies, the 6th Guards Tank Army, and the 1st Bulgarian Army. The 57th Army and 1st Bulgarian Army were facing the 2nd Panzer Army and 91st Corps to the south, while the rest were facing the German 6th Panzer Army and 3rd Panzer Corps in the north. These forces had around 465,000 men, over 1,200 guns and motors, and some 407 tanks and assault guns. The 3rd Ukrainian Front was led by Marshal Fyodor Tolbyukin. Army Group South was led by General Otto Uhler, and the 6th Panzer Army was led by General Josef Sepp Dietrich. The 6th Panzer Army would take the lead in the offensive and its core had the following objectives. The initial objectives for the 2nd SS Panzer Corps was Sarkerej Tour and Saroj. The 1st SS Panzer Corps was to the right of the 2nd SS Panzer Corps and its objectives were Miesio Corps Marom and Simeon Tornia. 
The first cavalry corps was to the right of the first SS Panzer Corps, and they had the CO Canal as their objective. The third Panzer Corps was to protect the flanks of the second SS Panzer Corps. There were seven Soviet divisions holding the front line against the Germans, and they had dug a defensive zone that reached a depth of 30 kilometers. As the offensive start date closed in, the weather became warmer and it resulted in the ground becoming very muddy, and this hampered the movement of troops in the battle area. Dietrich tried to get the attack delayed for two days, but he was ordered to attack on the 6th. The muddy conditions meant that the 2nd SS Panzer Corps didn't start its attack until the 7th and it advanced into a morass of mud. Nevertheless, it advanced almost to Charoge before becoming bogged down. By Lake Valence, the 3rd Panzer Corps had advanced 4 kilometers and had taken Serigiers. By the end of the 7th, the 1st SS Panzer Corps was able to break the second line of defenses the Soviets had and had advanced to the Sarvez Canal. On March 9th, the 1st SS Panzer Corps attack continued and got within 3 kilometers of Dreg. But for the 2nd SS Panzer Corps, things were still not going well. The 9th SS Panzer failed to advance beyond their front line, and the 2nd SS Panzer made 9 attacks that day, but were all stopped by anti-tank and artillery fire. The slow progress of the 2nd SS Panzer Corps threatened to derail the whole operation. So the 23rd Panzer Division with 50 tanks and assault guns was sent from Army Group South Reserve to the 1st SS to try to swing around and hit the flanks of the Soviet forces blocking the 2nd SS. Still on March 9th, the 1st SS Panzer Corps continued to advance. The 1st SS Panzer Corps advanced to just north of the villages of Saregrej and Simeon Tornia. Meanwhile, the 12th SS Panzer had advanced to north of Mezyashila. To the right of the 1st SS Panzer Corps, the 3rd and 4th Cavalry Divisions had closed on Enyeg. The German successes of that day caused concern for the Soviet High Command. The Soviet command shuffled their units around, making the 27th Army responsible for stopping the 3rd Panzer Corps and 2nd SS Panzer Corps, and the 26th Army responsible for stopping the 1st SS Panzer Corps and 1st Cavalry Corps. As this was going on, the Soviet command also prepared to launch its counterattack north of Lake Valence within the next few days. On the 10th, the weather and mud made all offensive action move more slowly. The 12th SS only captured Igar after nightfall and the 23rd Panzer approached Saregrish. The 3rd and 4th Cavalry Division had encircled Enying and had advanced a little further on. By this point, the 1st SS was 25 kilometers ahead of the 2nd SS. No progress was made by the 2nd SS on the 10th, but on the 11th, the 2nd SS Panzer Division broke through and cut off ABBA from the rest of the Soviet lines. At the same time, the 2nd SS moved into the outskirts of both Simeon Tornia and Saregrej. The next day, house-to-house -house fighting took place at Simeon Tornia, and by nightfall, all the town north of the Seo Canal was in German hands. On the 2nd SS Panzer's front, ABBA was secure, but no further advances were made. At the same time, the 1st Cavalry Corps scored some success with the 3rd Cavalry Division crossing the Seo Canal and the 4th Cavalry Division closing on Balaton Shabadi near the lake. But by now, the offensive was running out of steam as the Soviet divisions occupied ideal defensive positions in front of the Germans. Worse still, the 6th Guards Tank Army had redeployed to north of Lake Valencia in preparation for the upcoming Soviet attack. Meanwhile, south of Lake Balaton, the attacks by the 2nd Panzer Army had only managed to advance 10 kilometers before being halted. The 91st Corps had better luck, advancing 20 kilometers, but was then checked by the 1st Bulgarian Army. The 2nd Panzer Army and 91st Corps would retreat from their forward positions by the 20th of March. Between the 13th and 15th of March, the 2nd SS Panzer Corps was on the defensive in the positions they had captured up to that point. During the same period, the 23rd Panzer secured Charegrej but could advance no further. On the 14th, 1st SS Panzer managed to increase its bridgehead across the CO Canal to 5 square kilometers. But by this point, German intelligence 
had put the pieces together and realized that a major Soviet attack was about to be launched into the rear of both 6th Army and 6th Panzer Army. Operation Spring Awakening had failed. Dietrich asked for permission to withdraw, but this was denied. Instead, a major reshuffling of the forces involved was ordered. The 1st and 12th SS Panzer Divisions were to be withdrawn and replaced by 1st Cavalry Corps, and be moved behind 2nd SS and 3rd Panzer Corps to restart the stalled attack in that sector. Thus, at 11 p.m. on March 15th, the first units of the 1st SS were ordered to withdraw, mere hours before the Soviet offensive was to start. On March 16th, the Soviets launched their attack north of Lake Valencia, with the immediate objectives being Tata in the north and Varpolata in the south. The enormous numbers of Soviet vehicles and infantry soon overwhelmed the German defenders. Only on March 18th did Hitler finally give permission for the 2nd SS Panzer Corps to withdraw. The 1st SS Panzer Corps also retreated in order to avoid getting encircled by the Soviet advance. By the 22nd, the Germans were pushed well back from their starting lines for Operation Spring Awakening, with the 6th Panzer Army retreating to Vienna. The German failure enraged Hitler and he issued his armband order to the 6th Panzer Army. The order was for the Waffen SS divisions who took part in the battle to remove their cuff titles as a mark of disgrace. Knowing how this would affect morale, Dietrich did not relay the order to his troops. The Germans had suffered between 12 and 15,000 casualties and the Soviets around 32,000. German tank losses were also significant and many tanks were abandoned due to a lack of fuel. All the divisions of the 7th Panzer Army were under 50% strength at the end of the offensive. In just a little over 7 weeks, the war in Europe would be over. Thank you for watching. If you like what you saw here, please like, comment, and subscribe. Until next time, farewell.